All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, this is Stephanie Loop with the Department of Education, and today we are so happy to have um, Crystal Bessie and Celeste Finney here to present about Local Foods for Schools, um, which is probably some grant funding that you've been hearing about. Um, we're so excited to have them here to share more about this exciting opportunity. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us. My name is Celeste Finney and I am with the Seeds to Success team that's a part of LSU Ag Center. And I'm here with Crystal Bessie today. So we're gonna kind of tag team uh, what we have to share with you all. And um, feel free to just enter in a question in the chat or um, you know, we should have some time at the end. So if we wanna have any kind of more in-depth discussion, we certainly can do that. So, and uh, let me know if you can't hear me. Um, we're working with a new um, microphone and camera system here. So we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so if you were able to attend um, the SNAL meeting uh, with the commodity show that took place um, the beginning of November in Lafayette, uh, we handed out this PDF, and all of these materials will be available after um, today's presentation. So if you uh, if you feel rushed to write something down, don't stress about that. It'll be available after. So as many of you know, you know, with the COVID pandemic, um, many things were um, a light was shed on several issues that we had, especially with supply chain. So, um, you know, you could imagine 50, 60, 100 years ago, many um, people in our state and in our country were involved in agriculture. They farmed themselves, they grew their own, their own food, they, many people lived in rural areas. And so now that infrastructure has essentially been lost. And with COVID, um, you know, there was a nationwide, um, USDA saw that schools who had strong farm to school programming, um, which meant that they had a shorter supply chain, they were able to be a little more resistant, uh, resilient with all of the issues going on with the supply chain. So money has been allocated to all the states in order to help assist supply chains. So what this is called is technically, it's called the Local Food for Schools Cooperative Agreement. You may see LFS for short. And Louisiana was allocated uh, $3.3 uh, million. And so we're gonna kind of go through how you as a, a school food authority can spend that money because it is intended to help strengthen the local supply chain and the local food system. So um, everybody in our state has been allocated uh, an amount of the 3.3 million based on your average daily participation, just like uh, the same way that you get your uh, planned assistance level with USDA, um, using your average daily participation with the National School Lunch Program, a similar formula was used. So every single school district in our state has funds allocated based on that formula. And so um, we're going to be able to provide two options with being able to process or being able to purchase local food. So option one is what we're going to talk about first. And this is where um, this money is specifically set aside for school districts to identify a local farmer, a producer who you can purchase directly from. And so we're going to kind of walk through those steps of how to purchase direct from someone who maybe you've never done business with before, but you would like to. And so once that purchase has taken place, then all of this money will be uh, managed through LDAF, Louisiana Department of Agriculture and Forestry and Mac Williams. So once that purchase has been made, invoices can be sent to Mac Williams for reimbursement. And so we're gonna walk you through option one. 
Option two will be um, something that will be available tentatively for fall of 2023, where we will be working with Mac Williams and his office to purchase locally grown items using the existing state warehouse system. So for example, if you want Louisiana rice, catfish, shrimp, sweet potatoes, these will be purchased in bulk and will be able to be distributed to you through your state warehouse. So we're gonna kind of get into the nitty gritty of these two options today. Okay, so it's important to point out, you know, with local, really we can span the lunch tray. I think a lot of times, um, you know, it's easy to look at a, at a school meal and think, um, well, you know, my pizza is not from here or my hamburger is not from here, but there's lots of ways that we can get creative to make sure that we're supporting local agriculture with our meal program. So even something like catfish or shrimp that might be able, uh, you may be able to procure for like this time of year is, uh, is really great because, you know, many of our schools want a meatless <laughs> option on Fridays. Um, we also have different vegetables based on seasonality, fruit like berries, uh, and of course, even rice. That's something that we're right in the middle of rice country, um, especially in Southwest Louisiana. So it's just about looking at the whole tray. You know, um, some days it may not be realistic that your entire tray can be local, but um, it is something that we can at least get some of that pie, if you will, to be spent on Louisiana agriculture. And so um, fundamentally, this uh, grant and this money is intended, like I mentioned, to help support local food systems. So part of that is by making sure that this folk this uh, funding goes to minimally processed foods. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what is a minimally processed food. Okay, so here, this is just a simplified um, chart that we'll have available for you afterward. So this is just kind of common sense. I know everyone on here is familiar with working with food and in the food industry. So it's nothing that is completely in left field, but common sense, you know, what are allowed vegetables? Um, minimally processed would be something that sliced, diced, whole, raw, dried, or frozen. It would not be canned. It would not be tomato sauce. It would not be pre-made patties, um, just as an example. So um, same thing with dairy. You know, cheese, yogurt, cottage cheese would be a minimally processed. Um, however, something that has cheese as the main ingredient, like a cheese pizza, that would not be a minimally processed food. And so, like I mentioned earlier, all of our funding for the Local Food for Schools program is being managed through Louisiana Department of Agriculture and Forestry. So I know, Mac, um, you guys have been busy submitting your um, truck orders and your PAL dollars uh, for USDA commodities to Mac, but he also sent out an email with your individualized local food for schools amount of money that you have available. So all Louisiana schools have been allocated some of that $3.3 million based on their average daily participation. All schools in Louisiana have an allocated amount that's less than $250,000. So I wanna point out, this may be something that is um, kind of new to you, or maybe you haven't taken advantage of this before, but, there, is, there are some things in place to help promote the local food system from a federal level. So one of these is Louisiana's revised statutes um, listed here, where in order to support local agriculture, um, small purchases up to the federal level of $250,000 are allowed 
for local agricultural purchases. So what this means is that informal procurement practices can be used up to $250,000. Now that is just for local agricultural products and specifically minimally processed local agricultural products. So keep that in mind that it's very technical with what that will support, but it's up to $250,000, which is meant to make um, the administrative burden a little bit easier for our child nutrition programs. And so here we have, um, Crystal and I are have sent out and we'll have this posted on the Seeds to Success website, but we have a little um, reference guide of an infographic where everything is in, in black and white writing or green and purple, if you will, to give you just a good at a glance to see those procurement guidelines um, all in one place. So you'll find that here, okay, if you are indeed purchasing local agricultural products, okay, if it's $250,000 or more, then you need to use formal procurement methods, meaning you can add a line item to your bid. Um, you know, you can do your, make this part of your RFP or an invitation for bid. If it's less than $250,000, then you can use an informal procurement method, which would mean you still need to, uh, to get price quotes and you would still wanna have these in writing because um, you wanna have that documented and you wanna keep your uh, documentation for at least three years. But the informal procurement method does not mean um, you need to do advertising. It doesn't mean that um, you know, it's going to be a sealed bid. It can be obtained over the phone. It could be obtained verbally. It can be obtained through an email, recording the three sources, and then awarding the contract to the lowest responsible bidder. And then, of course, if it's less than $30,000, then this is the micro-purchase method, which means that you don't necessarily need quotes, but the cost needs to be reasonable and purchases need to be distributed equitably among suppliers. But I do want to point out for this um, little purchasing uh, leg up to actually work, your entire purchase must be local agricultural products. So Crystal in a few minutes is going to talk about the option to perhaps use a distributor. And so if you're using a distributor, and let's say you have Louisiana Satsumas on there, um, but then you also have bananas, and that puts, your, um, that puts your purchases in a higher bracket, then you need to look at having those local agri agricultural products just on their own invoice. So Satsumas on their own invoice. Um, Sweet Louisiana sweet potatoes on their own invoice. So that's that's what I mean by that. And we'll we'll get into that in a little bit more detail in a few minutes. Okay, so again, no, the products are not local agricultural products. Then if it's sixty thousand dollars or more, use the formal method. If it's a uh, thirty or sixty thousand to thirty thousand dollars, the small purchase method. Uh, can be used, and if it's less than thirty thousand, the micro purchase method. So again, if it's a um, let's say even something like uh, Cajun sausage, well, okay, Cajun sausage is made um, right next door to my school, and um, that is a local product. Well, it doesn't meet the minimally processed rule. So you so if that purchase of sausage is over sixty thousand dollars, then you would need to use the formal method. Just to clarify. Okay, and then here again is the thresholds for simplified acquisitions. And like I said, we're going to send out an infographic where everything is on the on the same page. I know sometimes. Um, I struggled with this at the district's level where if I wasn't involved with purchasing every day, it would take 
me a lot of time to go back and find what are the numbers for everything? Am I doing this properly? So hopefully we can provide that resource to just give you one place to look for everything that you know is gonna give you accurate information. Okay, so again, option one with spending your funds. So we're encouraging the school food authorities to procure products from small and local businesses. So we, the Seeds to Success team, we have been maintaining a list of school districts that, re, or I'm sorry, of local farmers and producers who reach out to us who are interested in doing business with schools. So we already have a list. It's filed according to uh, parish. So it's easy to see exactly who your players are or who you're interested in dealing with. Um, so this um, list should be live on our website. We're having some, some issues at LSU with our connectivity. So hopefully within the next day, um, this will be live on our website for you to see this, uh, it'll be in the form of a Google form. So it'll be live as we vet people who are interested in doing business with schools. Our team will be sure to add the correct information so that you have access to that list. And it's as simple as calling out to them, giving them a call, shooting them an email, uh, letting them know what you're interested in purchasing and uh, if they can meet that need for you. And then also, our office at Seeds to Success, we are um, we manage the Louisiana Market Maker website, which I like to joke that it's almost like a, a Facebook or a matchmaking system for producers in schools or producers and buyers. So you don't have to make um, a profile of your school if you don't want to, but you can still use it to scroll, filter by map. Um, maybe do a keyword like beef and just see who comes up and you can go to that list at any time online and contact those vendors to see if maybe uh, they would be interested in doing business with you as well. Okay, and I'm going to turn it over to Crystal. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Okay, good afternoon, everyone. And um, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about um, working with, with your purchases with uh, either local farmers or local um, fishermen or um, local distributors. And so um, for, this, for this local foods for schools money, you can use it with your, broad, with your produce distributor, um, but like, uh, like Celeste was saying, you have to have all of your local agricultural products that you want to purchase from a from a larger produce distributor um, on a separate bid so that you can utilize your local foods for schools money. Like if you want to put strawberries and sweet potatoes um, on one bid and you want all of those to be local, then you can use your local foods for schools money to get reimbursed for that. So, um, and then we also have local um, local distributors. So one in particular that I'm thinking of, He Services, Lafayette, and the New Orleans and Baton Rouge area. So if you're in one of those areas and you wanna get in touch with him, I believe he is on the list that um, it was distributed by Mac. And it was also, you know, Celeste just talked about it, the one that, um, that is a Google form. He's on that list. Um, there are also other ways that you can purchase your local products, and that's through a co-op or a food hub. You can do go directly from the farm. If the, the schools in your district have a nice school garden and you want to you want to purchase some of their produce, that's also allowable or any combination of those. So um, when you're buying from a distributor, you always want to make sure that you um, let them know that you're looking for, for local produce. And you can do that by in your solicitation. Um, and this, a lot of this refers to if you're gonna use the formal procurement method, um, like geo, geographic preference, which all of this is like Celeste said, um, no one has even an, um, anything over $250,000. So you really don't have to worry about using geographic preference in this way. 
the distributors um, they can supply local produce. They may be doing that without your, your knowledge even. Um, so having a relationship with your distributor is a great start just to let them know what exactly you're interested in doing. Um, there are cooperatives. There's not many in the state, um, but they can also um, be someone that you can purchase from. They have some backhauling procedures that incorporate measures to prevent cross-contamination, depending on what type of cooperative they are. So you just have to make sure that um, your purchase is 100% local if you're using the local foods for schools funds and make sure it's all minimally processed. <clears throat> so um, buying from a cooperative or a food hub, um, there is a giving grace uh, farmers and Fishers Cooperative, and that is probably, that's the largest food hub that I know of in this state right now, and they are located around St. Martinville, um, so you can feel free to give her a call or uh, contact her and see if she, what kind of products that she has available. Um, but she is a food hub and she does do a little bit of processing as well for definitely for okra. So if you're interested in any things like that, um, she is a cooperative. Uh, so you just need to make sure that you ask questions like, um, what is the traceability? Who are the different, maybe who are the different um, farms that she works with? What are their food safety practices? Um, it, using a cooperative can reduce your transactions, so you don't have to order from so many different people. And they offer a greater variety because they're, they're pulling from several different farms. So when you're buying from a farm, um, so you can buy with the season and you, you may not be aware that um, maybe like, uh, let's say collard greens are not available year round. Um, sweet potatoes are a good one because they're usually, they have a really long shelf life. You can pretty, you can get uh, local sweet potatoes, Louisiana sweet potatoes, um, mostly year round. Things like rice, you can get that uh, for the most part year round. But there are other things that are seasonal like acorn squash or any kind of winter squash. Um, zucchini is gonna be more in the springtime. So just keep in mind, what you want and you need to always make sure that you speak to the farmer well in advance so that um, he's aware of what you want. Um, this can expose students to unique varieties. There are lots of farmers out there who experiment with different types of zucchini even um, and so different sizes and shapes and, and you can expose your students in that way. Um, Developing innovative and, and new recipes. I, I know the farm, the, um, I want to say farm fresh flavors, but what is the flavors of Louisiana? Right, fresh flavors. Flavor <laughs> festival. <laughs> festival of flavors. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> That's it. We'll get it. <laughs> So festival flavors, they're, they're creating all kinds of new recipes and that's, that's great. So you can utilize those new recipes. Um, so you can also utilize uh, farm seconds, which it, if you're gonna be cutting up the, let's say uh, sweet peppers, you're gonna be cutting those up anyway. So you don't care what they look like. They don't have to be the prettiest. They don't have to be a first. And so, um, be aware of what type of equipment you may need in your kitchens and do you already have that? And how about your staff? Do they have the culinary skills, the, the knowledge and what kind of training are you gonna to have to provide um, by purchasing these whole products? Or, and I also wanna mention, you know, I know many school districts have issues with staffing. So it may not be realistic that all of your schools can take something like fresh peppers and have the um, time and flexibility to chop and prepare that. But it may be something that you can do at a couple schools or one area or, uh, or just even one or two days out of the menu where it's not something that's happening every single day. Right. <clears throat> 
So if you're considering buying from a farm or a small business, um, you can search your, search the market for local suppliers. Um, you can go to your farmer's market, check out who's there. Um, you can, uh, you know, so you want to negotiate your pricing and your payment terms. You know, you want to talk about the ordering, the delivering, the invoicing. You, you want to make sure that you have spoken to that farmer about um, making them a vendor within your, you know, district. So all of those things have to be done before you can actually make the purchase. Um, so talking and making those relationships as early as possible is, the, is really important because they can set aside land um, for your district. And let's say you want zucchini. They can say, you can say, I want zucchini for the month of, of May. And so they would start planting and growing that and having it ready for you when that time comes. And so, but just keep in mind that weather can affect your harvest times. It, it can affect the product condition. So always you want to make sure you have a, a backup plan for that. Um, so food safety quality assurances. GAP is an option. If you want to require GAP, you do not, you may, but you do not have to. Um, and so GAP means good agricultural practices, and it's a third party um, certification that farmers can go through to assure that they their products are safe. However, um, that's not the only way to assure that your products are safe. Um, you can um, also go do a farm visit. You can ask them what their food safety um, practices are. And you can also call on us and we can discuss that particular farmer, we can help you determine how safe that farmer is being with your food. Um, so GAP is not a requirement um, and it is oftentimes a barrier for those smaller farmers. So just keep that in mind when you're considering who you, when you're considering who you want to purchase from just because they don't have GAP doesn't mean that they're not doing things safely. <clears throat> Uh, a really great resource is this School Guide for Local Food Purchasing. Um, it is an Ag Center publication that we created. Um, it can be found on this link, but you can also find it on our website, seeds2success.com, under uh, Local Food Purchasing. Uh, Tools for Procurement is the name of the page, and it's under Local Purchasing. So it talks about on-farm food safety. It talks about food safety checklist and um, different things that you can talk to the farmer, ask the farmer to get a better understanding of their practices. There are also um, USDA resources for this, um, for you know how, how to make your purchases and um, this procuring local foods for child nutrition program, um, is a great resource for you know learning how to make lo local purchases, and then they have this really easy um, decision tree as well, um, trying to navigate your way through local purchasing. So um, we've already talked about some of the tips for working with local farmers, but you know, just to reiterate, you want to plan in advance. You want to um, start having relationships. This is a great time to um, invite the farmer to come to the cafeteria or to come to certain classes or grades to talk to talk to them about how they grow. And um, but in addition to that, you always want to make sure that you are on the same page with what is expected and um, how things are going to be packaged, um, price point, quality, product sizes. But also you want to give a little bit of flexibility because the, the smaller farmers may not have, they may not be packaging in the same way that you were purchasing from your broadline distributor. So um, hopefully you can come up with some kind of compromise between the two and they can say, well, we package in this way. And then you say, okay, well, this is how I want to order. Make sure that they have product liability insurance. Um, usually, um, 
a good a good product liability insurance would be around a million dollars for from the farmer is what what people ask for. Um, so just make sure that you're establishing clear processes of how you want the producer to um, deliver, how how you want that product to be delivered, how do you, how do you want it to look. This local foods for schools money also pays for delivery and transportation. So, um, so you can also use that money in that way. And then you can even talk with some of your other area districts and, and maybe come together and, and place an order together. And another uh, great thing about working with local farmers is it's a great marketing tool um, to share the good work that you're doing in your child nutrition department with your stakeholders. I mean, you know, um, sometimes school meals can get a bad rap. And so this is a great chance to show them that, no, we're bringing in the freshest, um, most nutritious foods that we can. And this is the uh, local farmer and the those businesses involved with that local farm is who we're supporting. So it's a really it's a great marketing tool for your department as well. Yeah, so you can, you know, if you, who, whatever farmer or fisher person that you're purchasing from, you can take their picture and put it there on the line and say, this, this is who grew your food today, you know? And so it, it can also generate some interest from, from the students as well. So, um, you always, like I said, plan in advance, um, talk about product labeling, talk about um, tracking, and make sure you may want to write down some of the things. You may want to take a look at your menu and think, okay, um, I can substitute um, California strawberries for Louisiana strawberries. And so you would you know, make sure that you know when the when the seasonality of strawberries are and make sure that they're available nearby. And then, so the Louisiana Market Maker website is a really great tool to find what you're looking for in your area. And so you can go to their website and do a search and just um, take a look at different products that are available there. Um, and you would really, I think, be pleasantly surprised with just in the past year, the different variety of local foods that are available. We have a beef uh, processor that um, is on Market Maker. We have local shrimp, local uh, catfish, local fisheries. We have um, all kinds of different different items that maybe you haven't thought of before that can easily be um, substituted like Crystal said. So this is the website la.foodmarketmaker.com and so that's where you can go and search for different food. You can look by list item or you can look at the map and I'll show you the map in just a minute but the other ways is the list that, that Celeste was talking about, the Google form. And you can find uh, under finding local food on the Seeds to Success website. Um, Louisiana Grown is another way that you can find local um, farmers in your area. Louisiana Direct Seafood is another um, website that has you know all things seafood on there. Um, like you can go to your local farmer's market and talk to them, um, see who they're, see if they have any interest in selling to your school system. And another way to find local producers in your area is to call your local extension office. Um, and you can, if you go to um, lsuagcenter.com, then they can, uh, you can search for your parish and then find the phone number to your local extension office and just give them a call. So this is what our website looks like. And you've got four options at the top about Seeds to Success, Seeding LA, Harvest of the Month, and Purchasing Local. And so when you click on Purchasing Local, it's going to bring up this drop down that you see where it says Purchasing Local, Finding Local Food, Menu Planning, and Tools for Procurement. So 
the Google form is going to be here under finding local food. And then when you scroll down the page, um, this heading called sources of local foods and there's a local food sources contact list. It's also going to be um, at the top. I, I put it at the top of the page, but like Celeste said, it it's going to show up right under this green box as soon as the page uploads. Um, so it should be there by tomorrow at the latest, I would say. And then you can always find it by clicking on this link. And that's under number four, under sources of local foods. So this is uh, what a search under market maker looks like. And this is a search for strawberries. So you can see um, there's a list over on the left and there's a map on the right. And you can toggle between the map and the list um, over here, right above the map, there's different icons. So you can do list, map, or both for strawberries. And you see the green and the yellow numbers there. Um, so there, let's say right around where it says New Orleans, there's a number four. If you zoom in on the map, the closer you get, those four producers are gonna pop up. So you'll be able to see who exactly they are. So you have to zoom in and out on the map and, then, and um, that's how that works. So when you when you go by this option one, you're going, you let's say that you have found the perfect farmer that you wanna purchase sweet potatoes from, then what you're going to do is you're going to um, take your, you've got your three quotes, you chose your farmer, then you're going to submit a pro forma invoice to LDAF. So you're gonna send your invoice with the product description, how much you're gonna buy, the delivery charges, all of, all of that to LDAF, and they are going to authorize the procurement of your sweet potatoes. So once you get that authorization, then you're gonna go back and you're going to proceed with your order, you're gonna receive it, um, and then you're gonna pay your vendor. Um, and then you're going to um, send that completed invoice after you receive the food and you're going to submit it back to LDAF for reimbursement for your for your funds. And that will, and that is how that's the main way that we're going to be utilizing the local foods for schools money right now until uh, in the fall when when you may be able to do option two. So this is option two. Um, hopefully that will be available in fall of this year. And that is specifically for the catfish, sweet potatoes, rice, and shrimp. And those purchases are gonna be made in advance by LDAF after you tell them how much you want to allocate your local foods for schools. So you may have already utilized all your local foods for schools money by then, that's fine. Um, but if not, then you will you will have that uh, that option later on to be able to utilize option two. So I'm sure you guys have some questions. This um, our seeds to success website is here. You can follow us on Facebook if you have not done that yet. And um, these are our emails. We are happy to answer any and all questions about this or help you in any way that we can. Um, so that's what we're here for. And, and if you have any questions right now, we're happy to, to entertain those as well. Yeah, and I wanna point out, you know, um, this program is really evolving as, as we spend more time with it. Every state is kind of left to their own devices, if you will, to see what program works best for their state. So if something is working really well for you and you want to share with us um, or vice versa, something isn't working, let us know. Um, we can also, um, you know, we're happy to give a little more guidance on formal procurement. If there is something that's going to be above the $250,000 um, threshold and you would like some guidance on how to actually procure uh, in the formal method to get a local item on your menu, we're happy to share that as well. 
Um, and so by all means, we're here to serve you guys and to help make this program better, um, make it easier for you, do the legwork as much as we can for you. So if there's anything um, that uh, you need that could help assist you through this process, feel free to reach out to us. That's what we're here for. And uh, someone was wanting us to uh, talk about the liability insurance. So for um, producers or um, your distributor, um, you just want to make sure that they have liability insurance. Insurance. And usually the minimum is a uh, million dollars in liability insurance. And so they're, they're not they're not paying a million dollars for that. They are paying for that um, assurance up to a million dollars. So uh, they're paying a premium to handle a million dollars of coverage should they need it. So and that's pretty standard with most businesses. It'll be about a million dollars. So um, and this is something just to ask ask your farmer what kind of, you know, or maybe maybe you're working with someone really small and that's something they need to do before you can do business with them. So, um, you know, all of this, these are good conversations to have. But, you know, of course, if you're, if you're purchasing from a school garden, they're not going to have liability insurance. You just need to make sure. So if you want to purchase from a school garden and you have questions about produce safety, um, we have lots of resources regarding that, that where they, um, we've got worksheets and different things like that, that they can fill out um, to make sure that they are following, you know, good food safety practices. That was a great question. Anybody else have a question for us? Well, um, like I said, all of this information uh, will be posted. You know, we can also um, have the infographic available. If you have um, uh, any kind of barriers at the district level, you know, I know from, from my personal experience, sometimes the procurement office at the district level may not have been in the know of what was allowed in the child nutrition department. So if you have any kind of um, barrier like that where you need some support, um, feel free to reach out to us and we're happy to help um, help with that. Let's see, we have, we have one more question. So yeah, and this is also explained in Mac's email that he sent out. You decide what you want to purchase, and you just uh, you send out you fill out a performa invoice mm -hmm. and submit that to LDAF for review, and then they will authorize they will authorize that purchase. And this is just for this local foods for schools money that we're talking about. This is just for the minimally processed um, allotment that you got. Right, and this is a separate bucket of money, if you will. It's completely separate from your planned assistance level with USDA commodities. Uh, it's separate from DOD. So this is its own thing that can start right now um, and will go through uh, spring of 2024. So, you know, you can, if you, you, your wheels may be turning where you already know, oh, I want to spend all my money on um, catfish for my Lenten menu or whatever, you know, um, or for maybe for the later in the year, whatever it may be, you can start doing that now. Um, so this question, what is the typical turnaround for producers when they fill out the survey if approved to be added to the list? And so this, the list that is on the Google form. So all those producers have approached us regarding that they are interested in purchasing local food. And we update that as quickly as we can, at least once a week. Um, however, that is not the, that is not the only producers that you can purchase from. And, um, you always want to vet every person that you 
purchase from. Even if they're on our list, you want to make sure that you are that they have the safe practices that you are looking for. Every SFA has that authority of their own, you know, definition of if you want to require gap or not. Um, so you just need to make sh you just need to make sure that that person ha fulfills the food the produce safety guidelines that you desire. Um, so even if, even if they make it on the list, you have to, um, you need to make those connections, make those relationships with those different people. Um, and also, if they're not on the list and you want to buy from them, that's also just fine. It, however you find that person that you want to purchase from, whether it's the person at your farmer's market, or you found them on Market Maker, um, that Google Forms list is not the end all be all of who you can purchase from. You're welcome to make purchases from outside um, businesses outside of that list. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we have a, about two more questions. So yes, to clarify, LDAF is not making the pur purchase for option one they are authorizing the supervisor. So that is correct. Now option two, where it'll be the big line items like rice, sweet potatoes, shrimp, catfish, that will be a situation where LDF will purchase that for you and draw down your funds on the back end. However, option one, absolutely right. They are not doing any of the purchasing. They are just simply reimbursing you. And they're being part of the process to ensure that we're in fact spending it on minimally processed items and we're following the rules. Um, so that's a great question. Yeah, and so <laughs> if you were at the meeting in November, um, it, the, the options were switched. And so we were planning on just doing it the other way around, but that has kind of changed. And so this is why we're having the webinar today to let you know about the pro forma invoice and that you can go ahead and start spending your funds. We don't wanna hold your funds while we put this option two in place. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's what the difference is. Um, okay, and then another question I have. <clears throat> okay, so even if approved by LDAF, the items still have to be bid out. So that's a good question. If it's approved by LDAF, this, the approval part um, isn't really the question, so to speak. The real question is how, what is the amount of the purchase? And that will determine what kind of purchasing procedure you need to follow. So let me, uh, let me get back here. Okay, so if you have a, a local agricultural product you're spending less than 250,000, you don't have to do a bid. You can do informal procurement, or it may even be less than 30,000 where you're gonna do the micro purchase method, okay? If it's not a local, well, this wouldn't really apply for this, but if it is a local agriculture product, it's above 250,000. Like let's say you wanna bring in local rice for your entire school year, then that would need to be something that's part of a formal bid. But if it's for uh, just a local product that you want to bring in, um, let's and let's say, let's pretend they're different purchases. So like, let's say you have $50,000 in local food for schools money, and you wanna spend uh, $20,000 in the month of March to bring in strawberries then that's fine. That would actually be a micro purchase. And if you want to spend um, the remaining amount of your money for um, zucchini for the month of April, then that's fine as well. That could be a micro purchase. So it really just depends on the amount of money that you're purchasing is, is what qualifies you as needing to have a bid or being able to do informal procurement. And again, all of these regulations are in place and these exceptions are being made 
in order to lessen the burden and essentially make it easier on child nutrition to help improve the local food system. So it all comes down to trying to make it easier. Um, and if you have any kind of pushback at your district's level about maybe purchasing things differently for the purposes of this grant, let us know and we're happy to, we can work with Stephanie um, to send, um, to send something from Department of Education or from our office, anything that will help um, help you uh, with the path of least resistance for as far as purchasing those. So to in this same question, even if approved by LDAF, the items still have to be bid out. By the time that you fill out a pro forma form, to the LDAF, you have already gone through and got contacted your three sources. You've already gotten your quotes. You've already chosen the person that you want to be the vendor. You've already chosen that person that you want to purchase from. All right, those are some great questions. Anybody else have any questions? And you know, you have our email address. Um, if you think of something down the road, I know sometimes um, you may not think of something until you're actually sitting down to, to go through the process yourself, um, but feel free to call us, um, send us an email, and we're happy to help assist you. Crystal and Celeste, thank you so much for being here today and um, answering all these questions that people have had. We will send out that infographic that um, Crystal and Celeste mentioned on this call. We will send that out to everyone. Um, but they, our partnership with LSU Ag is, um, it's it's such a good partnership and we're so thankful for them. And, um, you know, we wanna support everyone in using this exciting grant funding. So thank you for joining today. Thank Thanks you, Stephanie. Everybody. Uh, everybody have a great day.